right shallow one we'll get started here shortly just a few moments See, mic check, mic check. See, mic check, mic check. All right. We should be good. See. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praise on the glory unto Yahweh. Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakodash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And his son's name, who the world entered called Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise on the glory unto the Hawa Kakadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere heart of Aki and Wa'akwath. That's you, brothers and sisters, as make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give a double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught the truth and who rule well. And as you can see, the title of this lesson this morning says, Let them serve as examples for us in these last days. Yeah. And uh, this was inspired, you know, the spirit, you know, um, you know, guided me to the book of Psalms, the 78th chapter. You know, I was just doing a little bit of reading, you know, contemplation. And um, and as we know, let me grab this real quick in the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. You know, because, you know, each of us, you know, believers, we're about to have our own, you know, wilderness experience, you know, just as, you know, Yahweh Shah had to go through it, right? Our forefathers, you know, after they were delivered out of the ancient land of Egypt, they had to go through the wilderness. And that was pretty much set up for the Lord to, to test and serve. I mean, so like uh, for the Lord to pretty much test and uh, prove their fidelity towards him, Right. And uh, we're going to get, you know, some, um, you know, a chapter, you know, First Corinthians, the 10th chapter and read a little bit of Psalms, the 78th chapter, you know, and uh, Lord will and be edifying. But before we get that, I'm going to get this in Deuteronomy the chapter in verse one. It's Deuteronomy chapter eight and one. It says, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which Yahweh will swear unto your fathers. Yeah, and this still stands for us today. All right. We are supposed to do the words of this book. As Yahweh Shah tells us in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Let's get that. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. And we're coming up on our temptation, man. We're coming up on that, that hour of temptation, which, you know, uh, will be displayed through Jacob's trouble. Right? Where two-thirds of our people will be you know, eliminate it from the process, you know, by violent, cruel death, while that one third <clears throat> comes out refined as silver and gold, man. Now, I'm going to go into this word temptation real quick. And this is something that we have to prepare our minds for, all right, because we're all about to get put through this, right? But we have examples of what to be like and what not to be like, right? And Shalom T. Akima Akwath is on the comment board and is tuning in. All right, so uh, we're going into this word temptation in the Greek. Strong's G, 3986, Pyrasmas. All right, you see down here it says an experiment, an attempt, a trial, proving. It says, um, go down here, the trial of man's fidelity. And what does fidelity mean? Loyalty. The Lord wants to test your loyalty, All right? And the, you know, the famous scripture. Or the famous chapter is what? Sirach, the second chapter, man. My son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right? And it says integrity. All right? And what is integrity? You being complete. You being whole. All right? It says virtue, constancy. It says an enticement to sin. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of, of uh, the hour of temptation. All right? Although we speak out against the, the microchip. We speak out against the, the the dragon juice, right? We speak out against you know these uh, the cup of the devil, right? <laughs> you know Esau eat them. Although we speak out against these particular things, well, guess what? The Lord is still going to test us, 
with those very same things that we speak out against. Yes, we hate the fucking microchip. We understand that's the MOTB. But when you haven't eaten in a couple of days, when you when you're hungry, right? When you're put when your family is, you know, suffering because you know, you know, you refuse to uh, um you know lead them down to the chipping station, it's gonna be it's gonna look much more enticing. See, right now it's not enticing to us because we have refrigerators that got food in it right now. All right, we got water, we still got running water, our lights still on. Right. So it's not that big of an enticement. Right. But once uh, um, once the Lord violently unplugs us from America, from Egypt, from the spiritual Egypt, that's when things will be a lot more enticing. And that's why when we read through scriptures like our forefathers, you know, it's like it, to us, it's like, damn, how in the hell could they, you know, want to go back to Egypt after what the Lord just did? You know, to us, like reading it. Yeah, it, it makes us like frustrated. Like, damn, how could y'all do that? But. We, you know, they were actually in it. See, they were actually in it. And this is the time to where the Lord, you know, and that's the whole purpose of this grace period, man, is for us to, to meditate, you know, upon the time of wrath that scripture tells in Sirach, the 18th chapter. So when it does come, we're already braced for impact. We already expect, you know, to be tested, to be proved. Unlike our people that's playing games in the world right now, they have no idea what's coming. So they're going to buckle as soon as that first, you know, as soon as that first uh, a breeze, you know, from the, from the winds of destruction comes, man, they're going to buckle, right? But see, now the Lord is is allowing us to brace for impact, get ready for this great testing, get ready for this great enticement to sin, right? Or our temptation. It says enticement to sin. Our uh, I'm so lucky. It says temptation, whether arising from the desires or from the outward circumstances. Yeah, whether it may be something from deep down inside, right? Your mind, you start. You know, uh, um, you know, your mind, you know, after your lust, right? You get tempted after these things or out of from outward circumstances. And in these times we're coming in, it's going to be from both, you know, because <laughs> we are in this flesh is our enemies as well as Esau eat them. Right. So we're going to we're going to be getting opposed from all different angles, man. Now, let's uh, go back here to Revelation 3 and 10. And it says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Yeah, you got to keep the, the sayings of this book, right? Just as your Howard Shah did when Satan came to tempt him in the wilderness, right? And, and, and scriptures noted, it made sure that it noted to say that your Howard Shah was hungry, man. He was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry, right? <laughs> and Satan kept saying, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, he said that three times, which that word, if, is enshrouded in uh, uh, doubt, right? He was trying to have Yahweh doubt himself, right? In that previous chapter, Matthew, the third chapter, right, which we're going to get it, but it's uh, it, when Yahweh was baptized by John the Baptist, right? The uh, the heavenly father said the spirit descended upon Yahweh like a dove, right? And he says, this is my son in whom I will please. And then it goes directly into the fourth chapter, and then got Satan saying, if you're the son, if you're the son. So Satan's going to do the same thing to us. The Lord has made it clear to us. Yes, our spirit bears witness to this book. It, spare, it bears witness to Yahweh Bashem Shah. We truly believe we're the sons uh, of and daughters of Yahweh Bashem Shah. But in these times to come, Satan is going to be having us to doubt that. All right. See, you're not the son. You're not you're not a son of God. All right. You're hungry. He wouldn't let you go hungry. All right, if he really loved you, hey, all types of shit finna start uh, uh, being thrown at us, man. That's why you just gotta believe. Let me grab this real quick in uh, Romans chapter four. This is Romans chapter four and verse um, man, verse eighteen in the NLT, and it says. Even when there was no reason for hope, right? <laughs> Abraham kept hoping. And we're about to, with us being the seed of Abraham, we got to fulfill, you know, we got to walk in the, in the same shoes our forefather walked in, right? And he, the, circ, the certain circumstances and trials and provings that the Lord had Abraham to go through, it he made it look like it was impossible for him to, to even keep hoping. But when there was no reason to hope, he just kept believing, Right? Kept believing on, you know, everything that he's been, uh, um, that everything that was told to him from Yahweh Shemal Shah. 
and it says abraham kept hope hoping believing that he would become the father of many nations see and you see what that hope has produced right because he kept uh his faith he kept his integrity here we are today in 2022 right the seed of abraham isaac and jacob is still alive and well right particularly the the, the one third right the two thirds are finished it says for the most high have said to him that's how many descendants you will have verse 19 and abraham's faith did not weaken right so same for us right each morning you wake up your faith should be stronger than what it was yesterday when you had woke up man abraham kept waxing let me grab this in the book of tobit right um give me one second i want to say 14 this is the book of tobit chapter 14 and verse um and two i'll start verse one so tobit made an end of praising the most high and he was eight and fifty years old when he lost his sight which was restored to him after eight years yeah we lost our sight and now our sight was restored back into us and he gave alms right start being brotherly start giving to the church he says and he increased in the fear of the lord and praised him see so our forefathers were known to be increasing in the works of Yahweh Shai, increasing in your fear, increasing in the faith, because this is what we need, right? This is <laughs> we're the true preppers, man. You got all these particular YouTubers, you know, you know, uh, um, calling themselves preppers. No, we're the true preppers because there's no other, there's no way you can truly prep for the things that's about to come up on this place, man. And we see it. You got war. How you gonna prep for World War Three when the world has never been? In, in a particular war to where uh most nations got icbm new, uh, missiles man how you gonna prep for that it's gonna have to be through faith all right that's why we walk by faith and not by sight it says and abraham's faith did not weaken even though at about 100 years of age he figured his body was as good as dead <laughs> and so was sarah's womb verse 20 abraham never wavered Woo! abraham never wavered let's go into that word wavered which we we know what it means but these words are heavy man wavered shake with the quivering motion Ooh, why because he was he had his foundation built upon that rock yahweh bahashim yahweh shah says uh flicker quiver tremble glimmer all right falter yeah hesitate Ooh, he didn't hesitate man he just kept believing it says abraham never wavered in believing the most house promise and neither should we the lord has given us everything we need to know man all right he's given us apostles and elders teachers true true pastors feeding us with that knowledge that he said in jeremiah 3 and 15 man so we shouldn't be wavering in the promise right we know that we're about to get well we believe through faith that we're about to get those glorified bodies we believe through faith we're going to get salvation we believe through faith that our our enemies are going to be our captives man we believe through faith that we're going to live for all of eternity man and the little one shall become a thousand see we believe that and abraham did too and that's why we're here today because of his belief in the promise that the lord gave unto him it says in fact his faith grew stronger Woo! his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to the most high that's it man that's what our faith ultimately produce. It, it brings glory into Yahweh by Shemal Shah. See? Because two-thirds of our people, man, there, as you get in uh, Deuteronomy 32nd chapter, he says that there are children in whom is no faith, man. He called that <laughs> all the way back then. Right? But see, through that one-third, man, the Lord's going to get glory from that faith. Believing in the unseen. Verse 21, he was fully convinced. Man, fully convinced, and, and we got to be fully co convinced. As Hebrews 11 chapter says, being fully persuaded, right? Paul says in Romans 14, every man be uh, persuaded in his own mind. See, because we could bring out the scriptures, you know, we could do these lessons, we could go out to camp, but at the end of the day, everybody's going to have to believe for themselves, right? Because you're not going to have the luxury of, you know, being able to talk to a brother, you know, or turn on the video in Jacob's Trouble. It's going to be contingent, solely contingent off of what you believe, what you expect to happen for you, right? As when Yahweh Shah was uh, healing that man in Matthew the ninth chapter that was blind, 
he says, according to your faith, so be it, right? <laughs> so if that man's faith was that the Lord can truly heal him, well, guess what? His sight was going to be restored. If his faith was that Yahweh couldn't heal him, well, he he wouldn't his faith his uh, eyes wouldn't have been restored. But his 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 eyesight was restored because according as his faith, it happened unto him. So he says he was fully convinced that the Most High is able to do whatever he promises. Yeah, and the Lord, <laughs> and the way the Lord works, man, he likes to work in ways to where it looked like it's impossible, right? And that's just what brings him more glory. So let's get this in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 78. And we'll start, um, <clears throat> we can start right here, verse... Uh, Let's see. And really, this whole chapter is uh, <laughs> it's fire, you know, but I'm just going to try to get to the point. Um, yeah, we'll start right here. Verse uh, five, it says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Yeah, we had did a lesson on this, <clears throat> you know, the other day expounding upon this man you know and with us being discontinued from our heritage our fathers didn't teach us you know the ways of the lord right we we didn't know nothing about fearing the lord we didn't know nothing about us being the israelites that was you know uh, uh passing through the red sea right we we had nothing to, we knew nothing about that we didn't know that these covenants pertain unto us we thought that we were hamites you know gentiles americans right it says that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. That was the importance of um, Elder Abba Bibbins, which was also Elijah the prophet, because he restored, he he bridged that gap. He bridged the breach of the uh, the hearts of the children and the hearts of the father. All right. He made up for all the, that's why when you read Sirach, the uh, 47th chapter, I believe, it called Elijah the prophet the uh, the repairer of breaches. See, because that's exactly what he did. He repaired that breach, those generational gaps to where we discontinued from our heritage, didn't know nothing about nothing, man. All right. So here we are today, right? Now with this knowledge and this this eyesight restored back unto us like it happened at the Tobit, right? And now we should be increasing our fear and increasing in our in our faith, right? Being prepared, getting bracing. For the time of temptation and and take examples until our unbelieving forefathers it says verse uh seven that they might set their hope in the most high and not forget the works of the most high but keep his commandments it says and might not be as their fathers see that <laughs> and might not be as their fathers because they serve as, as an example man a stubborn and rebellious generation yeah we can say that even till today you know some of us, you know, that got parents are still living. All right, your parents is not in the truth. They're stubborn, man. You are, as soon as you came into the truth, you was telling them, hey, you know, pork unclean, you know, Christmas, you know, that's off, you know, all these, but what they, <laughs> it's like they became bigger, you know, bigger, um, or they wax worse in their rebellion, man. See? But that just proves that, you know, we're the Israelites. And unfortunately, you know, due to our disobedience, that's how we're classified. That's how we're known, right? But see, through the one third, you know, that hopefully elect, right? We're gonna the the world's gonna know who the Israelites are due to their obedience and their faith towards Yahweh by Shemal Shah. That's why the Lord said in Ezekiel. Let me get this in Ezekiel chapter twenty-two. He said what? Verse um, verse twenty-two. And you shall take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. And you shall know that I'm Yahweh Basham Shah. And that's happening right now. And when you read Ezekiel the 36th chapter, he says what? That I'm going to be sanctified in you. Let's see if I can find that. I'm going to be sanctified in you. Uh, yep, here we go. Ezekiel 36 and 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which is profane among the heathen which you have profaned in the midst of them, right? And we profane the Lord's name, right? How? By our actions, right? Doing the works of the heathens. You know, it's pretty much like we, um, say for instance, you, you know, like your dad, right? Your dad, he has he has a well-known reputation, 
you know, around the neighborhood, right? And everybody knows your father, right? But, <laughs> you know, at the same time, you know, they, they see, you know, uh, they see him and they got, they got, a, a, or he has this bad child, all right, with you being that bad child. Well, you profane your father's name by being, you know, that, that, that bad child on the block, man. Man, you seen Bobby's kid, man? Yeah, that dude was throwing rocks at everybody's car. Well, that was that was us, man. That's how we profane the Lord's name by getting engulfed into idolatry, right? But now, through the one third's obedience, right? Now the Lord is being sanctified. Let's read that. It says, "And the heathen shall know that I'm Yahweh Bashimah Shah, saith the Lord, power when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes." See that? And how's the Lord being sanctified? In, in us through this truth john 17 and 17 all right let's get that real quick get back on topic it's john 17 and 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth see so we're no longer going to be known as israelites due to our disobedience yeah we know who the israelites are because man they, they don't listen to the lord well see that's changing right now see now people know who the israelites are because they're putting in work all right they're being obedient. They're turning back. They're taking their inheritance back in the sight of the heathen. All right? They see families in order. They see this knowledge, truth, and understanding going out on the internet. And it's bringing fear amongst them because they know once we get back in order, then they ask get and they get they get an order too, which is back on the bottom. All right. So let's go back. Psalm 78 and verse uh, 7. That they might set their hope in the most high and not forget the works of the most high, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with the most high. Says the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of the most high and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he has shewed them that's right and we have to be mindful that we don't forget what the lord has already showed us man all right when the lord puts us into this wilderness all right into this wilderness experience that we're about to go into don't forget what he's already done for us all right and that's what our forefathers did it says marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt. See that? And what did he do? Send plagues upon that place. Just as the Lord is sending plagues upon this Egypt right now. All right? <laughs> is not the Lord plaguing the hell out this place? All right? You got a new, you got a new uh uh boogie monster over there in China, all right? That's 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 said to be deadly. See, and you know it's coming over here. All right, you got you got that polo, you got that polo issue, right? Over here. It just emerged out of <laughs> out of nowhere all over again. And of course, you still got the MP and the and the C to the one to the nine. All right. And I had a dream last night, you know, that uh gas prices had shot up like three or four dollars in one day. All right, and I woke up this morning and <laughs> lo and behold, one of the first articles I seen, all right, they said expect crude crude oil prices to go back up this winter time to over $120 a barrel. You know, so so the Lord's plaguing this place, but we got to be mindful that we don't forget the things that He's doing and what He's what He's already done, all right? Because if you do, well, then you're gonna be like, "Damn, what <laughs> is the Lord moving?" But yeah, of course He's moving, man. Let me get this in Proverbs, the twenty eighth chapter, verse five. Evil men understand not judgment. See that evil men understand not judgment. So. You know, you being unmindful of what, you know, or the, the Lord's previous judgments, you know, <laughs> you're evil. And it says, but they that seek Yahweh Bashim Shah understand all things. And we're understanding that this is the time of the Lord's visitation. Right. So with that, as as Peter says in Second Peter, the third chapter, what manner of person should we be in all holy conversation and conduct, man? So Psalm 78 and verse 12, marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt. And in the field of Zoan, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters to stand as a heap. Man, he made a way through the Red Sea. That was a miracle. In the daytime, also, he led them with the cloud. And all the night with a light of fire, he clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink 
out as out of great depths and that's what the lord is doing now in this wilderness america all right the lord gave us water living water who would ever known we would have had the truth right here in america man all right and just sprung up out of nowhere he brought streams also out of a rock let me get this real quick and um let me finish this out it says he brought streams also out of a rock which we know that rock to be who yahweh shah and cause waters to run down like rivers, right? And that's what the Lord is doing now. Let's get this Isaiah 44 and verse um, verse three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. All right, now is the Lord actually pouring? He's wetting every Israelite, <laughs> you know, man and woman up. No, speaking about this truth. All right, John seven and thirty eight. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, right? And we were those thirsty, we were those dry bones, right? But now we're being replenished through this, through the washing of the water of the word. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground, with that dry ground being your mind. Now your mind is being flooded with this truth, man. Every day, like you got a you got a plethora of men of the Lord. Okay, who am I gonna listen to today? You're being flooded with information, right? Heavy revelation continually be, you know, made known. You know, like last night, Elder Tahar had, Elder Apostle Tahar had uploaded a video about new information about, you know, uh, America being in the Bible, man. It's just, con it's, it's, it's unending. It's a flood, right? So we can't forget what the Lord has already done for us. So when these times of trouble do come, when Jacob's trouble do come, we can look back at this. It's like, nah, man, I'm, I just got to keep hoping. He, he done showed me too much already. I just got to keep, just got to keep going. He says, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Yeah, that's also cut on you damn Christians, man. Only the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can have the Holy Spirit. All right? That, that the spirit of promise that the book of Acts, the second chapter speaks about. All right? Ye men of Israel. He says, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring, verse four, and they shall spring up as, as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. That's right, man. So let's keep uh, reading in Psalm seventy-eight. He brought streams also out of the rock, and caused waters to run down like waters. Verse seventeen. And what did our people do? And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness, man. And as all this truth right is going out, what what is the rebellious of our people doing? They're being exactly that, more rebellious, man. They're provoking the Lord, right? <laughs> These niggas in church, man, they 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 they, they see what's going on. They see that America's getting played, but what are they doing? They still provoking the Lord. Am I still going to church, still eating pork, right? Still praying for for the uh for the economy of america to be healed right you're provoking the lord you're the same spirits that wanted to set up captains let me get this in numbers the 14th chapter this is numbers 14 and verse um yeah verse three and wherefore have the lord and this is what our people are saying in the wilderness and wherefore have the lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword so they're like why the lord brings to the wilderness to just die by the sword man that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Verse four. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. And these captains, right? These, these particular captains that's making our people return to Egypt. They're known as what? These pastors, right? Sadneta. <laughs> look, yeah, look. Hey, let's use him for example. Sadneta, right? Polite. That, that nigga polite. Right, they're Egyptologists, so-called. Well, those are captains that have, you know, pretty much they're over our people to return them in, back into Egypt. And really, if it's not of this truth, it ultimately it, it ultimately brings you back to Egypt. Anything that's outside this truth leads back to Esau, man. All right. But that's the mindset of our people. And while the Lord is showing us these particular judgments that He's doing for our behalf, man. With us seeing these things happen, this is for this is for us. All right, let me see if I can find this real quick and do I'm in the fourth chapter. And um might be 35. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Deuteronomy 4, 
and verse uh, 34. Has any other God dared to take a nation for himself out of another nation by means of trials, miraculous signs, wonders, war? Right. We, <laughs> we're going to World War Three. This is just the Lord taking us out from these people, man. A strong hand, a powerful arm, which is Yahweh shot and terrifying acts. Yet that is what Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, your power did for you in Egypt right before your eyes. So with us seeing all these things happening upon planet Earth, this is for our sakes, right? The plagues, the fires, the famines, the wars, all these things works in our benefit, man. For those that are obedient, for those that stand up to the test, right? So let's go back. Psalm 78. In verse 17, and they sin yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. Verse 18, and they tempted the most high in their heart. See, meaning in their mind. See, and the Lord is constantly looking at your mindset. All right. What is this, what does this nigga really feel? You know, does he is he really about the truth or is he just a hip, hypocrite? All right. And they tempted the most high in their mind or heart by asking meat for their lust. Yeah, this truth just ain't enough. You want something else. You're getting bored with this. They said that this is this is just manna. Right? <laughs> and that's why a lot of our hey man. Because I was I was uh well, I'm, I'm not even gonna mention that, man. But man, just just in my short time, you know, being in this truth, you know, particular people that I used to teach with, particular men I used to know, right? And hell, they used to teach me, right? And now they're back in the world just like damn it's like bro as scripture says you know how uh pretty much you get played with more demons right once you uh once you you know um you know leave this truth and that's true man because this dude this one dude i'm thinking about in particular man he's way off you know way worse off than what he was before he came to the truth when he was in the world at that time you know but <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, that's that's the track history. That's the track record of our people, man. All right. And it says, yea, they spake against the most high. They said, can the most high furnish a table in the wilderness? And he has, man. The Lord has furnished a table in his wilderness, which is his truth. All right. As, as David says in Psalms, the 23rd chapter. In the fourth verse, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is what? America. A valley is a low land. And surely this is a shadow of death. This place has been in war damn near the same amount of time that it's been in existence, man. So if this ain't the shadow of death, I don't know what it is. He says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And what's the rod and staff? This truth, this Bible, man. All right? It says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. See that? So the Lord is doing this in the midst of... Of all these other people's sight, man. We eating. We eating this truth. And eventually it's about to spill over into us eating physically, you know, when these people are starving in their presence. It says, You anointed my head with oil. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. My cup runneth over. Yeah, my cup is a cup is what? A vessel, which we are the vessels of the Lord. All right. And it's running, we're running over with this water, man. This this word it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell. In the house of Yahweh forever. Yeah, that's the end. That's the end result. That's the end goal right there. All right. <laughs> After the Lord gives us this table in the presence of our enemies, all right? He anoints us with the Holy Spirit. Then the next step is to be what? Is to be where? In the house of the Lord. Which we're in the house spiritually, but we want to physically, you know, <laughs> be dwelling amongst with Yahweh Shah. All right. So let's go back. <clears throat> We'll go here to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And as you can see, the title, right, that they uh, put in, which is it's a good title. You know, it says, Avoid Israel's Mistakes. Avoid Israel's Mistakes, verse 10. I mean, it's like in verse 1. And, you know, we often bring out the scripture, you know, to, to you know, prove, you know, that these Gentiles that Paul was writing unto was Israelites. But this is uh, this is also heavy edification, man. On, you know, not being like our forefathers, you know, first Corinthians 10 and one, it says, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. And what does ignorant mean? Not knowing, 
lack of knowledge, right? And what does the Lord say in Hosea 4 and 6? For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? So because you don't, because you didn't, let's get this, Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it had commanded and my spirit it had gathered them. And because our people don't read, right, <laughs> you know, they're erring. They're going to be destroyed, right? And this was important. As Paul says in Romans, the 15th chapter and fourth verse, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our admonition, right? Serving as examples, man, right? So it's, 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 it's vital for us to go back into this history, man, to, so we don't follow the same mistakes of our forefathers. And also on the right-hand side, right, those, those notable forefathers that we had, hey, follow their steps. So everything serves as an example, whether it may be good or bad. And you can learn from both. All right. It says, moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all and did all eat the same spiritual meat and all did drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. See that? And that's what we're doing now. We're drinking the spiritual, uh, we're drinking the spiritual drink, which is truth, and eating that spiritual uh meat, which is Yahweh Shah. So with that, we had to be warned not to follow the same steps that our foreparents did. It says, verse 5, but with many of them, the most high was not pleased. And what pleases the Lord? This is uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is without faith, it is impossible to please him. See, <laughs> they were an unbelieving generation. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Psalm 78. I didn't finish that out. Let me hold a couple of things. Just bear with me. Psalm 78 in verse 22. It says, Because they believed not in the most high and trusted in his salvation. See. Ultimately, that's why, you know, the Lord destroyed them and brought in that younger generation. You know, Joshua and Caleb, those little ones, man. Those that had another spirit inside of them. Hebrews 3 and verse 19. Let's start at verse 17. But with whom was he greed 40 years? Talking about that, that multitude in the wilderness, man. Was it not them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They couldn't stand up to that, <laughs> to that testing. To that testing that the Lord put up on them in their wilderness. All right. And once again, man, we're about to go through the same thing. So 1 Corinthians 10 also like it. let me finish that out in hebrews 11 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is and that's the most high's name yahweh yah meaning he all right he is he exists so you got to believe that he's 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 the ultimate power man all right he can make anything he could do anything he can make anything impossible hey luke 1 and 37 what does it say? Let's get that real quick. For with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. And Abraham believed that. That's why he kept hoping. He kept believing when there was no reason for him to hope. He was 100 years old. Sarah's room was, it was it had cobwebs on it, man. Right? Barren. He's like, all right, well, you promised it. And here the Lord is. He's promised us, man. You read the gospel, Isaiah 61, which these Christians trying to take away that hope from us, man, which they can't. All right, Isaiah 61, that's for us, man. We believe that report. We believe those promises, right? We believe that the day of vengeance coming for our enemies. He's going. He's comforting those that mourn in Zion, right? These nations are going to be our plowmen and our vine dressers. We're going to be the seed of the blessed all right, we're going to be that blessed seed that all nations are going to have to admit and acknowledge. All right, 
It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You also got to believe that. You got to believe, man, that the Lord will reward you. Right. If you diligently seek him. Right. Why else are you, you know, waking up every day, sacrificing your life? If you don't believe that a if the reward is coming. Right. If you don't believe that your work is going to be rewarded, well, it won't. Right. And of course, we do all this through faith, but we believe through faith. He will reward us, man. Why would the Lord wake us up to knowing that we Israelites? Right. And we're doing the best we can. We're fighting for the faith just for him just to say, ah, oh, you know what? Nah, just throw him to the curb. Now, of course, he could do whatever he want, but the Lord's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. All right. He uh, woke you up to this knowledge for a reason. Says verse five, but with many of them, the most high was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness and two thirds will be overthrown on this side. They were not entering to that rest. They're not going to get that first dominion. Right. And that a thousand years is spoken about in Revelation 20. All right. They're going to come back eventually. But that first dominion, it's not going to be for them. Verse six, it says, now these things were what? Our examples. Woo, let's go into that word example. And that's a heavy word. Example, an instance typical of a class, a model, either good or bad. See that? So we got good examples and we got bad examples says action or conduct as an object of imitation yeah <laughs> you know what to imitate and what not to imitate an example to be avoided punishment as a warning so the lord you know punish those unbelieving spirits as a warning for us in these latter times All right and paul's about to say that as a matter of fact um is he, let's see where is that at where he says it Give me one second. Yep, it's verse 11. Okay, so let's finish this out. It's 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 6. It says, now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. And you see our people, man, today lusting after, you know, the, 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 the things of this world. All right. It says, neither be ye idolaters. All right. <laughs> And ultimately, the reason why people are going to take the karagma is because Esau is their idol. Esau is their God. All right. Egypt. They want they they want to stay in Egypt. It's idolatry, man. And Egypt was known for idols. All right, let's get this in Isaiah 19. And when Yahweh Shah comes back to the spiritual Egypt, he's breaking up all these idols. It's, uh Isaiah 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt. Speaking about America, behold, the, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. And shall come into Egypt. Now, did that happen back then? No. <laughs> yeah, how is Shah's coming on that cloud in, in this Egypt, man? All right, and doing what? And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. So if you're in idolatry, all right, well, you're gonna be moved along with your idols, man. Because Yahweh Shah coming to break this whole system up. And the heart of Egypt shall melt, shall melt in the midst of it. And we see the minds of these Egyptians, man, melting today because everything that, <laughs> that they their whole life was built upon Egypt. Well, as Egypt is 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 faltering now, right? So is so are their hopes, right? So man, it, it just behooves you, you know, to just put your full faith and confidence in this this unmovable rock. It says, "Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written that people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play." And that's our people, right? <laughs> and a nigga today just playing around more than ever. Not taking nothing serious, just eating, eating, hey, like Apostle Ricard says, chicken eating niggas. Well, that's true. That's all these, that's all our people do, just eat chicken and play, all right? Right up, you got these grown ass, you know, 50, 60 year old men, got them, uh, what's them electric, uh, mo uh, scooters, uh, well, they own, they own scooters too, but y'all know what I'm talking about, oh, them slingshots, you know, them slingshots, <laughs> these old ass niggas be driving in, in the hood, man, bumping that, Whack ass music. That's Jake. Those, those same spirits that I was in the wilderness, eating and drinking and just playing around, not taking nothing serious. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Fornication 
can be what it was pretty much any unlawful sexual sexual desire right it could be idolatry right as well as adultery man all right hold them neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand and this is referencing what happened in numbers the 25th chapter all right when um the lord had put put to death get that number 25 In verse, um, let's start at verse one. It says, And Israel bowed and shipped them, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, right? And our people being entangled with these heathens, man. And they're sacrificing to, unto Cesare Borgir, or, or these uh, particular gods of Egypt. Or hell, it could be, it could, you, you could be your own god. All right, whatever whatever is put before the most high and says and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods and israel joined himself unto baal peor that's adultery because we were joined into the lord we were married you being joined into somebody that you, yes you being married unto them the two shall become one flesh so we detached ourselves from the lord or well, these people detached our these forefathers of ours detached themselves from the lord and married by all pure this particular heathen god and the anger of the lord was kindled against israel and the lord said unto moses take all the heads of the people and hang them up <laughs> before the lord against the sun that the sun that the fierce anger of the lord may be turned away from israel and moses said unto the judges of israel slay ye every one his men that were joining to buy all pure and that's going to happen again man and those fishes turn to hunters that you read about in jeremiah 16 and 16 all right and behold one of the children of israel came and brought unto his brethren a midianitish a midianitish woman in the sight of moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of israel who were weeping before the door and you know weeping before the door that was a particular practice that they uh that they did to pay homage and worship these other heathen gods all right like you read in jeremiah it speaks about you know the whip the women weeping for tammuz which Tammuz is uh, tied along with Easter, man, right? So our people doing the same thing today, weeping for these other gods who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, verse 7, and when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And that, <laughs> man, and the Lord is putting that type of spirit of judgment upon us, man. Those men that sign a crime for all the abominations right now. Now, of course, we don't, the Lord hasn't given us the power to execute judgment right now, but it's coming when Shehawah Shah comes, man. All right, but he's just building up that hatred, you know, for us towards these people, man. Because you see all this shit that our people's involved in. And it just vexes. That's a part of this vexation, man. Us being vexed day by day, knowing that you can't do a damn thing about it. Just, just, just go out there in the streets and just preach against it. That's the only thing we could do right now, All right? But eventually, man, the Lord's about to put, you know, the Lord's about to put a lot of our people to death, you know. And it's gonna be by the hand, you know, of the true judges, man. And it says, and those that died in the plague were what? 20 and 4, 000, 24 bodies man the lord took 24 000 bodies in one day hey and that makes me think about that scripture in second Edition 16 when it speaks about this time of trouble such as never was since there's a nation he said it's going to be great death well if the lord took out 24 000 people in that one day so imagine what's going to happen in these times times of great death Bro, so there's gonna be millions in in one on one crime scene that's gonna be taken, man. So we can just imagine. So this is why the only way we can truly prep is just a hey, building up ourselves on our faith, man. We're about to see a lot of things, a lot of judgments, man. Verse 9: neither let us tempt Hamashiach Yahweh, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents, man. And how do you tempt the Lord by simply not believing his report? You doubt him. Right, he already showed you right the right way. He showed you what it is. 
And you over there, are you sure? You know, no, bro. Like, <laughs> right? He's going to allow you to be destroyed by the serpents, right? And who's the serpent these times? Revelation 12, Esau, Edom, that old serpent called the devil. He's going to allow Esau to have his way on you, man. Verse 10, neither murmur ye as some of them murmur. What is murmuring going into? Just talking back, right? Just complaining. <laughs> Let's see. It says what? Of those who discontently complain. You're not content, man. Which the Lord is listening to all of your murmurs, man. You know, that's why we got to be careful. You know, to, to, hey, just check our mindset. Just check our mindset, man. Because the Lord is listening to everything. Every murmur. He's even looking inside your mind to see what, you, uh, what you're what you thinking. Let's see if I can get this in Wisdom Solomon 1. Wisdom Solomon chapter 1 and verse 10 says, For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. See, yeah, if you got a jealous ear, all right, <laughs> you're going you gonna to hear all things, man. You know, you hear your woman in the bedroom, in the other room. She on a phone call. She giggling and laughing. Like, who the fuck? Who's she talking to? Well, with us being the Lord's woman, right, he, he always listening to us, man. All right, he says, The ear of jealousy heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hit. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. Yeah, and with Esau, all these damn secret counsels, right? He think ain't nobody listening to him, but the Lord is, man. And even our people, man, they plotting, plotting to do evil. All right, they thinking these evil things in their mind. With the Lord, the Lord is listening to everything. As Yahweh Shah says in Matthew, the 12th chapter, right, for every word, Right, that is spoken, you know. Uh, every idle word that is spoken, you know, uh, will be held against you in the day of judgment. Right, for by your words you shall be justified and you shall be condemned. Right, it says, For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. So let's go back, first Corinthians 10, and verse 10. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured, yeah, they murmured in their tents. All right. We want some quail. Man, Moses brought us out here to die. All right? And the Lord, man, the Lord gave us this, this good manner, this good truth. Right? He, he, he snatches away from the pollutions of this world. Right? So we just got to be content and just keep having faith and just wait. It says, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. And these times, who was that destroyer? Esau, man. Now, all these things happen unto them for in samples, which means an example. And they are written for our our admonition, which that word admonition means a warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. So this was hey, this was uh, uh, <laughs> meant to be read today, man, because clearly we're in the end. All right. So this was written for us to take heed to. Let's get that in the NLT. These things happen unto them as examples for us. You know, the Lord killing 24,000 people in one day. That was for us to see, to consider in these times. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. And that's us, man. We are at the end of the end, right? So how much more should we be paying attention, right, unto all the good and the bad examples, man? All right. So man, I'll pretty much conclude that, you know, for this morning. But, you know, just want to, uh, you know, put those vibrations out there, you know, to, you know, to uh, admonish, you know, all of us, you know, myself included, myself first and foremost, you know, to continually check your mindset, make sure you don't have an unbelieving spirit, right? And, and pray for more faith, fast for more faith, right? Because sometimes, a, 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 of course, prayer is great, right? But a lot of times, especially in these times, man, you got to start coupling that prayer along with the fast, you know, that really gets the most high's attention, you know? So, so pray and fast for more faith, you know, and a, hey, just use this as an example, man. But, you know, Lord willing, that was edifying to you, sincere Akim and Akwa. Until next time, I want to give all praise on the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakak Kadash, DTA Baba Ball, Kwame Shalala Shalawan. Shalawan to Yakim and Akwa on the comment board and listening.